DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents the Cavalcade of America. Tonight's star, Ronald Reagan. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade is called Ulysses in Love and stars Ronald Reagan as Ulysses S. Grant. It begins in the year 1843 as a lone rider, wearing the uniform of a second lieutenant in the United States Army, gallops through a patch of heavily wooded country just outside St. Louis, Missouri. Suddenly, a small child steps out of a thicket directly in his path. Whoa, whoa there. Hey, little girl, don't you know better than to do that? What are you doing out here in the woods all by yourself? Aren't you afraid you'll get captured by Indians or lost? I am lost. What's your name? Grant. What's yours? Emmy, and I'm eight years old. Well, Emmy, don't you think your mother will be mighty worried where you are? What happened to you? Oh, she doesn't care about me. Nobody cares. Julia's coming home tomorrow. Oh, I see. Who's Julia? Well, she's my sister, and she's away at school. She's 17. Do you think I'm pretty? Well, let's see now. Uh, turn your face around a bit. Uh-huh. Yes, yes, I'd say you were one of the prettiest little girls I've ever seen. Am I? Do you really mean it? To On... swear? Well, I certainly do. And my honor as an officer and a gentleman. Do you think I'm as pretty as Julia? Well, I don't know, Emmy. Uh, I've never seen Julia. When you see her, you'll never talk to me anymore. That's the way it always is when Julia's home. The soldiers never even look at me. Well, now, Emmy, I promise the next time I come by this way, I'll talk to you and not to Julia. How's that? Will you? Will you really? And you won't even look at her? Not so much as a peek. All right. I think I'll go home now. That's a good girl. Now, Emmy, maybe you can tell me where I am and how to get to the Dent Plantation. Sure, I know where that is. I can take you there. Well, fine. Here, give me your hand, and I'll hoist you up behind me. There we are. Now, hold on to me tight. Oh, yes. Oh, I like soldiers. You're sure you know where this Dent place is now? Well, sure. I live there. My name is Emmy Dent. Now, don't forget what you promised about Julia. Giddy up! <laughs> Well, Lieutenant Grant, it's a great pleasure, I declare, to meet a man who was at West Point with my son, especially his roommate. We've heard a lot about you, Lieutenant. Thank you, Mrs. Dent. Uh, since I'm garrisoned nearby, I thought I'd just ride he over. He found and... me, Mummy. I was lost. He found me and rescued oh, me. Oh, now, Emmy, you've never been lost in your whole life. I was, too. The wolves were after me. He killed one, didn't you, Lieutenant? What? Oh, oh, yes. Yes, of course. See, Mommy, I told oh, you. Oh, now, Emmy. Lieutenant, you must stay a few days and visit with us. Well, thank you, ma'am. I'll stay the night anyway, if it's all right. Nonsense. You'll stay longer than that. Fred has written us what an expert horseman you are. The finest that's ever been up to the point, he says. Oh, well, now, ma'am, I... He is, too. You should have seen him, Mommy, gone like the yes, wind. Yes, yes, dear. Uh, we maintain a large stable, Lieutenant, and I'm sure you'll find the country around here most interesting. Now, I sure would appreciate getting up on a good horse again. Fine, then it's all settled. My daughter Julia's coming home tomorrow. Oh. She can show you all the old Indian trails. But, and Mommy, the... Julia doesn't know the first thing about... Oh, hush, Emmy. But she does, and she always gets lost. Now, dear, please don't interrupt. I'm sure, Lieutenant, my daughter Julia will be most pleased. Well, thank you again, ma'am, but if it's all the same to you, I'm sort of obligated to take my first ride with a previous acquaintance. Oh, I refer, ma'am, to your other daughter, Miss Emmy here. <gasps> One of the prettiest females, by the way, I ever saw in my whole life. Who, oh, me? Uh, is it all right with you, Miss Emmy? Is it? Is it? Why, it's... It... Oh, Lieutenant, I love you. Emmy, it's about time we turn back. The sun's getting too hot for you. Oh, please, not yet. Well, what you got your face all screwed up for? What are you thinking about? Oh, nothing. 
much. Lieutenant. Uh-huh? Will you do me a big favor, please? Well, now, that depends. Will you let me call you Ulysses? Oh, no. No, I won't. Oh. You see, Emmy, no one ever calls me Ulysses. They call me Sam. Sam? That's right. And that's what I want you to call me, too. Can I? Can I really? Uh Uh-huh. Sam. Yes, Emmy? Will you marry me? What? Whoa. Whoa there, Hannibal. Whoa, Pompey. Now, what's that you said, Emmy? Will you marry me? Well, now, young lady, that warrants a bit of discussion and uh, thinking about. Oh. Oh, it's not that you aren't a pretty woman, of course. Only, well, you're kind of young, aren't you? Just eight? I'll be nine in two months. Well, even nine. Oh, I didn't mean right away. I'll wait. Well, now, that's mighty kind of you, Miss Emmy. When I'm 17, as old as Julie, how old will you be? Well, let's see now. Nine years, I'll be just about 31. Oh, I think 31's a beautiful age to get married. It isn't bad. Especially to a slightly younger lady of 17. Well, I've I've heard of stranger things happening. You did? Did you? Oh, Sam, were we engaged? Well, now, Miss Emmy, I wouldn't say engaged exactly. Let's say we're considering each other. Oh, oh, my. No, I don't care if Julie does come home. I found you first and you're considering me. That's right. And now let's get going back to the house, shall we? This sun's getting mighty hot. All right. Julie must be home by now, and I can't wait to tell her. Giddy up, Pompey. Julie? Julie, where are you? Oh, Emmy. Here I am, dear, in the parlor. Come on, Sam. Oh, Emmy, where were you? Julie, this is Sam. I'm your Lieutenant Grant. You're out, right? How do you do? How do you do, Miss Dan? Emmy, you'd better run upstairs and tell Mother you're here. She's very worried about you. Worried? Why is she always worried about me? Because you're out so long in the sun. Look how flushed your face is. It is not flushed. I just got good color, that's all. Lieutenant, I do think you might have brought her home a little sooner. She's not used to such long rides. I'm sorry, Miss Dent. I guess it was kind of thoughtless of me. It was not. Sam wanted to come home sooner, but I wouldn't let him. We had something to discussion. All right, Emmy, but now you better run upstairs and lie down. I will not. I'm going to stay right here with Sam and... Oh! Darling, what's the matter? I feel kind of funny. Oh, Emmy, Emmy. I think she's fainted, miss. Oh, good heavens. I guess that sun was too much well, for do her. do something. I'll just carry her upstairs. Oh, please. There we are. Oh, the poor baby. Just a touch of the sun, miss. Nothing to worry about, I'm sure. Well, I hope so. Lieutenant Grant, we all love that child very much. Very much. Do you understand? Yes, miss. She's real sweet, and that's a fact. Kind of reminds me of my little sister. I don't understand how Mother happened to let her go out riding with a stranger. But I'm sure she didn't intend you to be gone this long. Neither did we, miss. It it just happened like that. I'm sorry. Oh, here. I'll open the door. There. Now put her on the bed, Lieutenant, and I'll get somebody to fetch Dr. Cartwell. Maybe I could go, miss. Oh, I should say not. You've done enough damage for one day. We'd better send somebody more reliable. Come in. Oh, Miss Dent. How's Emmy? She's fine. Dr. Cartwell says it was just a touch of the sun. Good. I, um... I'd like to ask your forgiveness, Lieutenant, for having been so rude. I apologize. That's all right, Miss Dent. I knew what was the matter with her. I didn't take you too seriously. Oh, you didn't? No, ma'am. And why not, may I ask? Well, you were kind of excited and you just... I was not excited. All right, let's just say you acted excited. I acted in no such way. Well, I must say... Yes, Miss Dent? Say what? That you're the most insufferable, impolite, unpleasant young man I've ever met in all my life. All right, Miss Dent, you said it. And I shall leave this room in a moment as soon as I've given you the message from my mother. Yes, what is it? Will you go riding with me this afternoon? Now, Will I... please don't get the wrong impression, Lieutenant... This is not my idea. It's only that my mother has certain thoughts concerning the obligations of hospitality. I see. And I assure you the prospect affords me no more pleasure than it does you. 
Very well. Let's just forget it then, shall we? Oh, no, please. You've got to come. I must? Why? Well, because my mother will think I have not been sufficiently sincere and cordial in extending the invitation. She will think perhaps I have offended you. Whereas, of course, you've been the very soul of gentleness. Oh, please, and... Lieutenant, you must come. Mother will be so angry with me if you don't. Please. Very well. I shall go riding with you this afternoon, Miss Dent. But as a favor to me to help my peace of mind, kindly be so good as to leave your horsewhip at home. I'll feel much safer then. Shall we say at three? Very pleasant country, uh, don't you think, Miss Dent? Yes, very pleasant. Would you say those are um, prairie chicken or quail, Miss Dent? Prairie chicken, I believe. Uh, do you hunt, Lieutenant? No, Miss. I guess I don't like the idea of killing animals any more than I like killing men. Isn't that rather strange, coming from a soldier? Why did you go to West Point, Lieutenant? To get an education. And uh, what do you intend doing with it? Oh, go back to the point in a year or so and teach mathematics. Although my pupils, I expect, will relish me more in the soldier than in the scholar. Why, well, Lieutenant, isn't that a quotation from Othello? Uh-huh. Surprised an army officer knows Shakespeare? Well, yes, just a little. I'll tell you how I come by it if you will promise not to breathe it to a soul. I promise. We gave a performance of Othello at Jefferson Barracks last month. Uh, I was in it. Oh, you were? What part did you play? You promised not to tell anybody now. Yes, of course. Desdemona. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, no, I don't believe it. Oh. Yep, for one performance. <laughs> right after that, they got in some female from St. Louis. <laughs> it sure was funny, all right. <laughs> hey, why are you looking at me that way? Oh, what way, Lieutenant? Well, I don't know. It's sort of as though you never saw me before. Did I? I'm sorry. Well, nothing to be sorry about, only... Why did you? I think maybe it was because I was surprised. At me? Mm-hmm. I didn't know you could laugh that way. Oh, you thought I was one of those military ramrods. I'm afraid I did. That's funny. What is, Lieutenant? Well, I kind of thought the same about you. I figured you out for one of those stiff-necked, domineering females. You did? <laughs> yes. Doesn't that beat everything? Oh, it certainly does. <laughs> Say, um, know something, Miss Dent? Uh, what? I'm beginning to enjoy this ride. I... How about coming out with me again tomorrow, huh? <laughs> Now, now, Emmy, put your head back on the pillow, dear. And you must stop crying, darling. But I don't want to stay in bed anymore. Oh, now, dear, you know what Dr. Cartwell said. I've been here three whole days already. I want to get up. I want to be with Sam. Where is he? Well, I, I don't know, dear. I, I think he's out riding with your sister, Julia. Again? Oh! oh no. Now, dearest, you must But, Mommy, I saw him first. Yes, darling, of course you did. <laughs> And I'm sure Julia isn't Wait till I all... get hold of her. I'll tell her, Mommy, he's mine. I love him. Shh, darling. Now, don't excite yourself. It isn't good for you. And anyhow, I'm sure Julia isn't at all interested in Lieutenant Grant. Yes, she is. I know it. Well, what makes you say that, child? This morning when they were both in here, I could tell. Well, how could you tell, dear? When she said she was glad Sam and I were such good friends, she looked at him funny... And then he said he was glad, too. And, and he looked at her funny. And then they looked at each other. Now, dear, I'm sure you must be mistaken. No, Mommy, I was watching. I'll bet she's trying to get him for herself right this minute. Nice out here under the trees, isn't it, Julia? Yes. This is where my brother Fred and I used to play when we were children. Uh, don't you think we'd better be getting back? In a minute. 
Julia. Yes, Sam. I'm due back at the barracks at dawn tomorrow. Oh. I'll be leaving your place after supper tonight. Look, Julia. Yes, Sam. I know that you and I... Oh, we didn't hit it off so well at the beginning. It was my fault. But... No, Sam, it was mine. Well, now, don't. Let's get into an argument about that now. Julia, what I want to know is... Yes, Sam? Well, are you engaged or promised to anybody? No, Sam, I'm not. Is... Is there anything else you want to ask me? Nope. Not now. This is far enough for one visit. Let's go back to the house now. I've got to pack. Listening to The Cavalcade of America, starring Ronald Reagan in Ulysses in Love, sponsored by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. At the DuPont Company, we often find our products filling needs we never dreamed of. For example, an alert manufacturer from Bridgeport, Connecticut, recently introduced a new device to make it easier for women to do their nails a polish container and brush all in one. In this device, a DuPont nylon plastic tube holds the nail polish. A little brush is attached to one end for spreading the polish on the nails. A gentle squeeze on the tube forces enough polish onto the brush for each nail. There's no bottle to upset and less chance of spilling polish on your clothes. When not in use, a metal cap lined with nylon provides an attractive leak-proof container you can carry safely in your purse. So... Another job has been made easier with the help of one of DuPont's Better Things for Better Living through chemistry. The DuPont Cavalcade continues, starring Ronald Reagan as Ulysses S. Grant. A few weeks later, in his room at the barracks just outside St. Louis... Second Lieutenant Grant is talking to his ex-West Point roommate, Fred Dent, who has just come on from Washington, D.C. So you've been up to see the folks, huh, Sam? How's, uh, everybody? Well, fine, Fred. Uh, Emmy had a touch of the sun, but Julia writes me she's all right now. Oh, Julia writes you, huh? Oh, well, it's, it's just that I wrote her to thank her for the nice visit I had, and uh -huh. she wrote me to thank me for the letter I wrote thanking her. Oh, I see, I see, yeah. <laughs> Sam, I might just well tell you now, if you're really interested, there's two people you got to convince outside of Julie. Two? Mm-hmm. Well, who are they? Well, first there's Emmy. Oh. She thinks you run out on her. And then there's my father, and I don't think he'll be too happy about it. Oh, but he doesn't even know me. He was away when I was there. Oh, it isn't you, Sam. He just doesn't like the Army. He was against my going up to the point. Well, what's and... the matter with the Army? What could a man do that's more honorable than wear the uniform of his own country? I don't know. He says there's no future in it. And, and no army man should get married unless he's rich. Huh. Well, are you rich? Fred, all I got in the world is the $64 pay I draw every month as a second lieutenant. Yeah. Do you love her, Sam? Yes, I think I do, Fred. Well, there's no man I know I'd rather have for a brother-in-law. Thanks. Well, it's your father I'm worrying about. Well, why don't you go up and ask him? Ask him? Shucks, I haven't asked her yet. Maybe I will, though. Maybe I'll run up next month. Oh, no, no, no. It'll have to be before next month, Sam. As a matter of fact, it'll have to be this week. This week? Why? Well, I came on from Washington with special orders. Looks like we're really going to have this war with Mexico. Fourth Regiment, your outfit, is leaving next week for field maneuvers in Louisiana. So if you're going up to see Julius, son, you better get... Thanks, Fred. I'll go in and ask the Major for a leave right now. Lieutenant, you wish permission to marry my daughter. Is that it? Yes, Colonel Dent, I do. Well, young man, you can't have it. Can't? May I ask why, Colonel? First, because you're in the Army. 
I disapprove of the Army. Well, but, sir, your own rank. You're a colonel, aren't you? That, sir, is purely honorary. But why, if I may ask, do you disapprove so strongly? Because I'm against man killing his fellow man. Well, so am I. Very much so, sir. But if we didn't have an army to defend us, it, well, it would be an invitation to any foreign power to walk right I in. I do and... not wish to debate this matter with you, Lieutenant. There are also other reasons why you cannot marry my daughter. I'd like to hear them, sir. Can you support her on your army pay? Why not? She's willing. Other women have married army officers, And sir. how happy are they, tell me? My daughter has lived a good life, Lieutenant. I am a rich man. And uh, <clears throat> that brings me to another point. Yes, Colonel? It is my belief, Lieutenant, you wish to marry Julia for her money. Colonel Dent, I wish to marry your daughter for herself. All I ask of you is your blessing. And that's all I shall ever ask of you, sir. I'll never give it to you, sir. Never. Now, if you'll excuse me, I will wish you good day. Sam! Sam! Who's that? It's me, Emmy. Where are you? Right here behind the curtains. But what on the... Come out here. Now, young lady, perhaps you'll tell me what you're doing there. I was listening. I wanted to find out what was so important you had to say to Papa. Oh, Sam, you promised to wait for me. Oh, I'm sorry, Emmy. Will you ever forgive me? I didn't think you were fickle. Emmy, I've got a little brother home about your age. Uh, maybe I'll bring him around sometime, huh? Well, is he older? A little bit older? I like older men. Yes, he's uh, almost 12, I think. Has he got red hair like you? Yes, he has. All right, then. I forgive you. <laughs> Sam. Oh, Julia, I just spoke to your father. I know, dear, but I told him we were going to be engaged anyhow. What did he say? He said I could do as I pleased about that. He did? Oh, Sam, I'm so happy. They're engaged. They're engaged. Hush, Julia's baby, a... hush. Sam, you... You write me every day? All right, Julie. I don't suppose there'll be a postman hanging around the battlefield that regular, though. And you be careful, Sam. Please, for me. And for me, too? I'll be careful. And God bless you both. Goodbye. Molino del Rey, Mexico. For conspicuous gallantry in action in the Battle of Molino del Rey... Brevity to First Lieutenant Ulysses S. Grant. Chapultepec, Mexico. For conspicuous bravery on the field, over and above the call of duty in the storming of Chapultepec, brevity to Captain Ulysses S. Grant. Welcome, Captain Grant. Welcome back to the plantation. Thank you, Colonel Dent. Uh, I understand you acquitted yourself quite creditably on one or two occasions down there in Mexico. Well, sir, I just happened to be where things were going on. I see. And uh, now the war is over, I suppose you've come to claim your bride. Yes, sir. Where is Julie? Uh, before you see her, Captain, there's something I should tell you. Perhaps it will change your mind about marrying my daughter. Well, what could that be, Colonel? Captain Grant, the war has wrought many changes around here. Yes, sir. How's that? Well, <clears throat> many of the plantation owners uh, speculated rather heavily in certain commodities. Some of them uh, who were once wealthy are poor men today. I'm one of those who have lost everything, Captain. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. <clears throat> you may therefore consider yourself honorably released from your engagement to my daughter, sir. Colonel, I don't understand. What's that to do with... I have no dowry to offer with her, sir. If she comes to you, she comes without a penny. Colonel Dent, I once told you all I ask of you is your blessing. I meant it then, and I mean it now. And now if you'll excuse me, sir. Sam. Oh, darling. Julie. Did father tell you about... He told me. I'm not worried, darling. We'll be able to live on your salary. 
I hope so, because I intend to stay in the Army. Whatever you say. I'm sure anything you make up your mind to do, you're going to do well. Well, dear, we can only wait and see. Just wait and see. Well, for quite a long while, as time is reckoned, it was hard to tell if a certain particular man was going to get ahead. As we know, however... Ulysses S. Grant became commander-in-chief of the Union Army, one of the great figures to emerge from the Civil War, and went on from that victory to hold the highest office in the land, President of the United States. Thanks to Ronald Reagan and the Cavalcade players for tonight's story, Ulysses in Love. And now, Bill Hamilton speaking for the DuPont Company. Just about a year ago, a young man visited the DuPont Company's nylon display room in Wilmington, Delaware. There, he got an exciting idea that led him into a brand new business venture. His idea was simply this. Many people wear heavy fleece-lined overshoes in bad weather. The same kind of overshoes made of a nylon fabric, he reasoned, would keep out water just as well as the old kind. Nylon fleece would make them warm and comfortable, and they would be lightweight, durable, and they would dry quickly. So he, his brother, and a friend went to work. They convinced suppliers of nylon fabric that here was an idea worthy of development. They learned how to sew the nylon, how to attach the nylon fleece, how to fasten the sturdy upper to a crepe rubber sole. And in nine months of hard work, they solved a dozen or more tough technical problems. They made boots and tested them. And finally, they had a product so good and so attractive in appearance that a bank was willing to lend them money to go into production. They looked into factory sites and chose one at Malone, New York. And the businessmen of Malone welcomed them. And so today... There are new cold-weather boots on the market. There are new jobs in Malone. There is a new business on the map of America because three young men had the imagination, the courage, the plain old-fashioned gumption to try something that had never been tried before. Once again, a small business has been created through the use of nylon, one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. Next week, the DuPont Cavalcade will present its annual Christmas broadcast. From the stage of the Playhouse in Wilmington, Delaware, we will bring you the DuPont Chorus of 116 Voices in a program of Christmas carols. Be sure to listen. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was written by Arthur Arendt and was suggested by the book Captain Sam Grant by Lloyd Lewis, published by Little Brown. Ronald Reagan can soon be seen in the Warner Brothers production, Storm Warning. In support of Ronald Reagan tonight, Denise Alexander was Emmy and Patsy Campbell was Julia. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Vores. The program is directed by John Zoller. This is Cy Harris speaking. Don't forget, next week, the DuPont Chorus in a program of Christmas Carol. The DuPont Cavalcade of America comes to you from the Belasco Theater in New York and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Have fun with Baby Snooks. Three times mean good times on NBC. Mm.